All right, we are back in the studio for another episode of Just for Funds here at NASDAQ Market Site. I am Allie Doyle, head of ETF listings here at NASDAQ. Today we are joined by Dan Peterson, who is a product manager over at New York Life Investments for their ETF suite. So today we're going to be talking about a couple of their different ETFs, their research and development ETF suite that we have listed here on the NASDAQ. So Dan, first off, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Ellie. So can you tell us a little bit about this R&D suite and how the, this, these ETFs really sort of work? Absolutely. These are pretty exciting because these rank in a way that we haven't seen in the market before. There are traditional growth ETFs out there that look at growth in various different uh, financial metrics. But the R&D suite actually uses research and development spending as a way to discover and weight the holdings in the portfolio. And so how do these products differ from just like a traditional growth sort of screening that we've seen from other products? Absolutely. So if you think about other products that look at historical figures, you know, has earnings per share been growing? Have, you know, different metrics been growing, looking back and, and coming to the uh, present? This is a little bit more forward looking because you're looking at where companies are spending money. So if a company is spending a lot of money on research and development, they're looking to be responsible to their shareholders and grow their company for the future. So here we get to find some of the companies that are a little bit more innovative and forward looking. Um, and you're not necessarily restrained to the growth segment of the market. You may find some bl uh, blend and value uh, stocks in there. So like we said, you've, you guys have two different R&D ETFs listed here on the NASDAQ. Do you see any kind of key differences in the holdings between these two products? Between the two, not really. I mean, one is a world allocation. So you have both U.S. and international securities in there. And the other one is domestic large cap. Uh, LR&D is, is the domestic one. And the world uh, R&D product is WR&D. Uh, for the most part, there are some overlapping holdings. And really, it's what you're looking for, right? Are you looking for these innovative companies just in the domestic markets, or are we looking at the world uh, more big picture? So how have both of these products, you know, how have they performed since their inception? Pretty well, actually. Uh, we like to compare the strategy to uh, NASDAQ 100 as an example of, as an index, uh, or S&P 500, or other large cap indices out there. Um, and, and they've done pretty well. They have uh, pretty nice up capture to the uh, broader markets. Um, with attractive down capture. So the up capture tends to be a little higher than the down capture. And we think that that's because we're finding companies that are uh, really interested in growing. Mm -hmm. um, those companies tend to not fall as much in a down market um, as, as opposed to some companies that may kind of be holding on for a little while. So, you know, Dan, there's really no shortage of risks in the market right now with expected volatility. Um, how do you expect these products to really fit in investors' portfolios moving forward? We see this as a little bit of a core product that tilts growth. Um, again, you're going to find more growth holdings in here. Uh, in the U.S. version, it's about 50% growth. And then you have it split mostly evenly between blend and value, about 25% in each. Um, and that's just how it sits from the R&D spending currently. You'll find a lot of... Um, healthcare firms in there, and you'll even see something like IBM is in there, right? And that, that's a company that isn't necessarily tagged as growth, but mm. it's going through growth phases and, you know, invest in AI and other, you know, thematic areas currently. Um, but what's also interesting is you look at something like NVIDIA, and a lot of the traditional indices have a very large weight to NVIDIA. Uh, because this goes by R&D spending, you're not as overweight to, you know, such a, um, a volatile holding. So we've definitely had it in the portfolio and been able to, you know, use that as part of the growth, but uh, it also limits our downside when, when volatility hits. Definitely. Well, it sounds like a very exciting, you know, area of the market. I know New York Life continues to expand their, their ETF lineup. So if some of our viewers want to learn more about all of your ETF offerings, where's the best place for them to go? Absolutely. It's uh, NewYorkLifeInvestments.com slash ETF. Perfect. Well, Dan, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. Thanks, Ellie.